free. Come on, are you free? Yes, I am free. Oh, I am free. Yes, I am free. Just lift your hands to him. Just give him honor. Just give him praise. And we worship you. We worship you, King of Glory. We worship you, King of Glory. <laughs> we worship you, King of Glory. Come on in your words. Just begin to sing a song. Let it be lifted up in this place like sweet incense. Just your own song, your own melody, whatever comes to mind. Come on, lift it up. You could have an incredible voice. You could have not, in the natural, you could have not so good a voice, but just lift it up right now. It's a sweet, sweet incense. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, you right, you right.
Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing the power and majesty praise to the King. The mountains fall down and the seas will roar at the sound of all.
us the promise in heaven. Jesus. Why don't you just put your hand on the shoulder of the person next to you. pray this with me. Father, for the person on my left and on my right, never be the same again. Let them have an encounter with you that leaves them undone for life. Let them never be the same again. <laughs> Let tonight be the turning point. In Jesus' name, <laughs> more of your glory, more of your presence, fill them up, fill them up to overflow, and when they can't take any more, give them even more. <laughs> the kingdom of heaven is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let righteousness, peace, and joy begin to bubble up. Come on, let us begin to fill, be filled to overflow. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, kingdom is beginning to invade. Oh, more, 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 more. Come on, just reach out to him. Reach out to him. Reach out to him. Reach out to him. Oh, oh. Up to overflow, fill us up to overflow, fill us up to overflow, fill us up to overflow. Come on, drink tea tonight. Oh. <laughs> Come on, drink tea tonight. Just lean into whatever God is doing. Whatever God is doing in you. It doesn't have to be the same as everybody else. Just lean into what he's doing. <laughs> I don't know if you're ready to pray a dangerous prayer, but if you are, <laughs> why didn't you pray with me? on to you one more tonight. It doesn't matter what you look like. Come on, this may cost you your, this may cost you your composure. You may have a certain image that you've been trying to portray, but when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, that all goes out the window. So little I get so little crazy. Oh, when heaven, when heaven comes down, it gets a little wild, gets a little crazy. Oh, when heaven, when heaven comes, come on.
He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. Come on, lift up high, the highest praise. Lift up the highest praise. Oh, we lift up the highest praise. Oh, we lift you up. Oh, we lift up. We lift you up. We lift you up, King of Glory. King of Glory, we lift you up. Take your off the place. My God's not dead, but surely alive, living on the inside, roaring like a lion. My God's not dead, but surely alive, living on the inside, roaring like a lion. My God's not dead, but surely alive, living on the inside, roaring like a
with the holy fire. You baptize us with the holy fire. Oh, baptize us with the holy fire. 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 Oh, baptize us with the holy fire. 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 us with the holy fire and baptize us with the holy fire. His heart is calling us. It's calling out to our heart. Come, come, he's calling now, leave it all behind and come, come, lay it all down, lay it all down, lay it all down. He's calling you to come, he's calling you to come, the deepest part of your heart, Jesus. We answer your call, Jesus. We surrender everything, everything to you, Jesus. Baptizes with the holy fire. Baptizes with the holy fire. Baptizes.
Holy Spirit, God, we want to be baptized in your holy fire. God, we want to know what it is to be consumed in your fire. God, we're hungry for you. We're hungry for your fire, God. Holy Spirit, show us what it looks like to be consumed in your fire. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. The Spirit is here just got to search for that sweet spot of his presence. He's starting to pour himself out. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We just want to go deeper in you. We just want to be sensitive to what you're pouring out right now, Holy Spirit. We want to know what it is that you're pouring out, and we want to move into it. We want to move into it in a stronger way, in a deeper way. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 God, we just thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. Just thank Him within your own heart. Begin to thank Him. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, we permit you to come and take over this meeting, to come and have your way, to come and mess us up, to come and mess up our plans for you tonight, to come and mess up our plans for our own life, come and mess up our lives for you, God. We just want you, whatever our life looks like, it doesn't look like much if it doesn't have you. So come in and have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord, come, come. Bring your fire, God. Unleash your fire, God. Unleash your fire, Father. Unleash your fire, God. We just release angels into this place tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God.
Father, take that heat. Fill our whole beings with that heat, with that love, God. Consume us, God. Our every cell, our every cell. Consume us with your fire, with that fire of your love, God. We want to be possessed by you. Every being. 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hands. We become more aware of your presence right now. <laughs> Begin to sense his love just washing over you right now. There's a baptism in love just flowing from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Every single, every part of your being is being consumed with that incredible love. <laughs> it's just increasing right now. It's getting stronger. The weight of His glory. The Shekinah glory is in this room. The weight of Kabod is clothing you right now in His glory and His righteousness. Why don't you just take a deep breath right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just let it begin to blow on you. The wind of the Holy Spirit just beginning to move. I just see the different angels move, beginning to move around the, the room and ministering to different people. Thank you, Jesus, right now. Some of you are just being delivered of anxiety. Stress is just lifting off. There's a peace that surpasses all understanding that you're beginning to. Just drink deeply of that peace right now. I'm actually expecting that there's going to be some people that just in the midst of this, in this presence that you're going to walk away and you say, I had this, I had a fear in this area and a fear in that area. And I just noticed that since, since that worship time, since that ministry time, that that hasn't been a problem anymore. I'm just not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid of the dark. I'm not afraid of dying. I'm not afraid of being broken in, whatever. Right now, fear. Because perfect love, in perfect love, casts out all fear. But God does, has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. So right now, one more time, just take a deep breath. You feel that? <laughs> Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Did you know that the devil didn't invent la laughter? It says in Psalms that laughter is a good medicine. Come on, let righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit just begin to explode out of you right now. Thank you, Father, that the windows, the gates of heaven are beginning to fling wide in this place right now. Thank you, Father, there's a saturation unlike anything that you've experienced before. He's touching people all over this place. Come on, there's deliverance, there's change being broken off. There's mindsets that are being broken that you've struggled with so for so long. There's thoughts that have kept coming in these niggling thoughts. In this moment, in the glory, in the presence that is coming off right now in Jesus' name. Whoa. <laughs> it's easier than you think. things that we do at the School of Supernatural Transformation, it says, um, taking captive every thought, every thought that raises itself against the mind of Christ. We actually have the mind of Christ, and what the enemy will do is try to implant a thought into your mind and get you to own that thought, that that thought has no right. The devil has no authority except for that which you give him. And so one of the things that we've been doing is we've been laughing at lies. When the devil speaks in your ear, <laughs> it just sounds like the biggest joke. <laughs> Let's just try this. I'll never truly be free. <laughs> Let's try this. Is this a lie that we can laugh at? <laughs> Freedom is actually really hard. 
<laughs> I'm always going to struggle. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever fully get healed. Come on, you can laugh at that one. <laughs> Oh, come on. The lies of the enemy are ridiculous. They're a joke. Come on, this freedom. It's freedom. There is freedom. <laughs> but you don't want you want to know some good news. Jesus actually paid 100%. It has been paid in full. There's nothing left to pay. There's nothing left that you need to pay. Do you know, that's what condemnation says, that I, we, I need to do something to kind of beat myself uh, because of what I did or anything like that. But that's actually an insult to the cross because it's been paid in full. Anything that says that I need to do something in order to, to gain salvation actually insinuates that the blood was not enough. Come on, this one is just reach out to him. I tell you what, there's freedom unlike you've ever experienced before. Come on, just drink it in deep. Thank you, Father, right now. Freedom, freedom, freedom in this place, Lord God. That you said that where the Spirit of the Lord is, that there is freedom. That every shackle is to be broken from this time forth. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. We're not going to keep on struggling again and again because it's no longer we who live, but Christ who lives in us. We're a partaker in the divine nature. As he is in this world, so are we. <laughs> Man, that's good news. That is good news. Oh. <laughs> Just turn to somebody and say, you can't offend me. <laughs> turn to somebody else. You can't offend me. Because <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> you can't offend a dead man. The only man that's alive is Jesus Christ, and he's unoffendable. <laughs> Some of you may feel, be feeling offended to, uh, towards the laughter. That's okay, you're unoffendable. <laughs> if you're new to laughter <laughs> it's a it's a response when there's joy when there's happiness <laughs> I tell you what the world is a counterfeit do you know what the problem is? That many people think, oh, I have to become a Christian because I have to give up every, every pleasure. I can't have sex anymore. I can't, I can't do alcohol. I can't do drugs. And in your church, it's just about do's and don'ts. But I tell you what, we were created for pleasure. And when you have tasted and you've drunk of the finest wine, any inferior wine, why would you even begin to, why would that even tempt you? Why would you even want to touch it with your lips? There's nothing like it. When you've experienced his presence. Because there's no high like the mo most high. There's no pill like the gospel. <laughs> Come on, reach, <laughs> reach out to the person next to you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's pray this. Very solemnly. 
Get them, good God. <laughs> Don't let them off easy. <laughs> Oh, oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, let us be consumed by you. Let us be consumed by you. You know, I've seen demon possession. I've seen demons take over people's bodies. Come on, tonight we want a Holy Spirit possession. What does that look like when it's literally no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me? <laughs> oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> come on, if you want a new realm, realm of freedom, why don't you just come to the front? Why don't you just stand up? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> come on, freedom reigns in this place. I believe that there is a new level of anointing that God is beginning to, there's newer heights, there's different levels in Jesus' name. <laughs> Come on, are you hungry for more? <laughs> this is not just for tonight. Why don't you help me, Chris? <laughs> this is not just for tonight, but I'm praying. You see, God is not just taking us from one glory to a lesser glory. It was meant to be fading down. But it says in 2 Corinthians 3.18 that He's taking us from one glory to another. So I'm believing that even when you begin to live this place, it's not like this was, this was the pinnacle, this was the climax, this was the place that we encountered the Holy Spirit. Yes, it was, but He's going to be taking you to, from a higher height to a new level, to new levels, to new levels. Thank you, Father, that you're releasing new levels. Oh. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Release your fire, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Right now, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord. Fire! Oh! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Right now, I thank you, Father. Holy Spirit is about to come on this section right here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus, more fire, more fire, more fire. Thank you, Lord. More, more, more. Right now, fire! Oh! Oh, shibere, shibere, baby. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Right now, in Jesus' name. Right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit's all over you. Right now. Fire! Oh, shibere, shibere, baby. Oh, ribe, shibere, baby. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right now, power is off. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for these girls. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for these girls. Thank you, Lord. Well, thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, break out right now! Break out right now! Right now! Right now! Right now! Right now! Right now! In Jesus' name. Oh, 
fire, 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 fire. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the fire of the Lord that is about to hit Joe right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Ho! Oh! All over you, Joe. It's going deep. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for these girls. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Right now, I thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Just close your eyes, raise your hands real quick. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, fire coming right now in Jesus' mighty name. He's starting. He's starting to come. He's starting to come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. What? There he is right now. Fire. Fire, fire, fire. Shoot, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's all over you. Thank you, Lord. He's all over you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Are you ready? Here it comes. Are you ready? Here it comes. Here it comes. Right now. Right now. All over you. In Jesus' name. More, 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 more. Oh, shit, baby, baby. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Everyone say, more God. More God. We want more Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Oh, just reach out to him. Just reach out to him. Oh, thank you, Father, for a new level of glory. For a new level of glory. For a new level of glory. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, just on your own words, just begin to give him praise. Just begin to give him honor. Thank you, Father, right now as the praise is being lifted up, that heaven is beginning to come down. Thank you, Father, even a new way. The praise is being lifted up. Heaven is coming down in this place. Oh, we praise you. We praise you, King of glory. We praise you, King of glory. We praise you, King of glory. Come on, just out loud. Lift up the highest praise. You, we praise you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. I just had a word from the Lord, and He said, In these last days, says God, I, I memorized the scripture, but yes, He says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. What does that look like when the spirit of God comes on flesh? I tell you, what does the manifestation look like? What does that look like? What does that look like? Ask yourself, what does that look like? Thank you, Jesus. Brother, I've been looking at you, and I feel God is all over you, man. He's going to do something on you tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Move right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. More, 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 more. Holy Spirit, just come upon my brother. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. As the praises go up, 
the glory comes down. As the praises go up, the glory comes down. As the praises go up, we praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus. What are you guys doing? Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we love you. Father, we thank you for a spirit of adoption in this place. Lord, we just trade the spirit of an orphan for a spirit of adoption. Oh, God, that we're never the same as we leave this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Paul says, in, in one accord, in one mind, turn your affections to the Lord Jesus Christ right now. Bring it back to that place. Look to the Lord. He has everything you need. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. Mercy. Mercy coming upon you right now. The mercy of God. Some of you need mercy in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Mercy right now. I see mercy. I see a girl right now. There's mercy coming upon a girl. You've been struggling. You've been struggling with something. Uh, it's demonic. And it's been really just, it's been hindering you in your walk with the Lord. And the Lord is saying mercy is coming to you tonight. I see mercy. I feel like, I feel like you're in this area. Hey, thank you, Jesus, right now. That darkness leaves that girl. Yeah, right now, mercy is just like all over you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for my brother. Yeah, man. I just see, like, electricity going through you, man. It's like God has, like, just charged you. And he's put, like, like you're just, like, in that, whatever you call it. Like, when you put the cord in the charger, it's like God's, like, lightning bolt is, like, shooting through you, man. And it's not, like, man-made. It's, like, it's, wow. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. What do you, what do you think about that, Kim? that lightning just shoots to Kim too right now, God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> lightning from heaven. Oh! <laughs> Bam! Oh, it's... Bam! <laughs> just grab, grab hands right now. Grab hands. I feel like something's just gonna, like something's releasing and it's just gonna go through. Bam! <sighs> Did you feel that? Did you feel something come through? Right? Where did it stop? Where did it stop? Right here? Come on. Release in Jesus' name. Bam. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for Kim right now. God, you're going to do something new in her life. Something unexpected. Something unexpected, Lord Jesus. Lord, you're revealing. You're revealing. You're revealing. I see trees, Kim. I see you coming out of a place with trees in your life. I feel like you've been going through a bit of a wilderness, but the Lord is bring, bringing you out of that place, and you're going to go to new heights. I see a step, and I see you hit a step, but the Lord says it's not a wall, it's a step. It's not a wall, it's a step. I'm going to take you to the next level. What Those things that you've been pressing through, persevering through, the trials, he says it was just a step, and I'm going to take you to the next level. Thank you, Father, for your spirit all over, Kim. Waves of love to your daughter. Waves of glory to your daughter. Someone needs real freedom in this place tonight. Man, I encourage you right now. Just run to the front right now. It, it's someone over here. Run to the front, please. I feel like God is going to set you free. And uh, what a hunger. God says you have such a hunger for him. And it's, and it's a real hunger for him. And you have a real heart for him and a deep love. And he loves your humor. And I just see that God is just going to, uh, what are you going to do, Lord, through her? Thank you, Jesus, for children. Yeah, Father, thank you, Jesus, for children, God. She's been crying out for children, Lord. Lord, I thank you that she's going to be a mother. She's going to be a mother, God, a spiritual mother, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I see young ones around you, sister, and I see you just raising them up, and I see wisdom, the wisdom that's on you. 
and I see it overflowing onto them. I see it overflowing onto them, and I see them going farther than you. Your heart's desire is that others would go further than you. Yeah, thank you, God. Bless you, your sister. See, God just does such a special work in your heart. Yeah, he has awesome things for your life. <laughs> Can I pray for you? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Is there someone here and you have in your pocket chewing gum? like an extra, maybe five pieces. Someone have like five pieces of extra chewing gum in their pocket? Is there five there? No? How many? Four. I'll take one anyway. That's okay. <laughs> no one else do that because I hate it when people reveal chewing gum and then everyone just gets it. So I'm sorry. I appreciate that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He always knows what I need. God is awesome. He's very good. He's very, very good. But I agree with, with uh, where our brother Andrew was sharing. There is freedom that's coming. Freedom that's coming. Freedom that's coming. Thank you, Lord. I feel there's a young girl here, and you've had been struggling this week, suicidal stuff, trying to come against you. God's going to set you free when you give it over to Him. And you don't even need to pray a complicated thing. It can be just help, God. I want you to take this struggle. I don't want it anymore. Thank you, Father. I feel there's a younger girl here, and you've been struggling with something that happened when you were younger. And that's been getting you down and down and down. And you don't know how to deal with it. You just give that to God. You say, God, help. I need your help. You can come and see me after. I'd be happy to pray for you. But God wants to set you free right now. He wants to set you free. And it's all a matter of your heart when you release it to God and say, God, take this thing. I don't know how to deal with it. I don't know what to do with it. Help. And you say that. God, I want your help. I want your love. I don't want to deal with this thing. I don't know what to do. Give it to God. and He will help you. He will pour out his love. He will pour out his mercy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I had, um, thank you, Lord, a lot of issues with, with my grandfather, I had a lot of issues with, and um, I really didn't like him, and all this stuff that he'd been causing, and the mess that he'd been getting into, and um, and I just thought, mate, this guy just needs flogging, and um, someone needs to tell him to get in line, you know, <laughs> I was young, and I was like pretty fiery, and God was trying to tell me that I had to forgive him, and love him. And I didn't know how to do that, really. So I needed help. And I just said, Holy Spirit, you tell me to love everyone. You tell me to forgive everyone. Well, I can't do it by myself. Because every time I think about him, I just, I just think he needs to flog it. <laughs> and um, just being real, is that okay? Be real. And, and so I had to ask Holy Spirit to help me. And Holy Spirit started putting love in my heart and so I just said okay I let it go and I forgive him I love him and then if I ever thought about him I'd be like is there any like any anger there if there was then I just knew I needed to keep saying I forgive him and I love him and until finally I closed my eyes and I pictured him I thought no there's no anger there I love him I forgive him it's okay and then Later on, I saw him, and I was able to hang out and love him as Jesus. Amen? That's what Joel was talking about before when he's saying you're all dead. You're not just a dead person inside and just walking around like a zombie. You have now the Spirit of Christ, what makes you alive. 
no longer I that live, but Christ that live in me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And let me just say quickly, if your circumstances are less than perfect right now, that's no excuse for you to not be a loving, beautiful, shiny Christian. Because Jesus lives in you. And it doesn't matter, you know, God, it doesn't matter that I'm struggling financially right now. I don't care. I just love you and I know you're going to look after all of my needs because you said you would. God, it doesn't matter that I'm struggling at work or with, with mom or with dad. I know you're going to make it good. I know you're going to do good. Why isn't it done right now, Lord? No, no, no. <laughs> Handbrake on that one. I know the Lord is going to deal with my situation and I trust him and I love him. You trust his heart, even if you can't see his hand. If you don't know what he's doing, you can't see why this mess is happening in your life. You trust who he is because we know he is good. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Shaka Rabba. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> And I love you guys. Um, you can go ahead and just bless somebody. If you're on the floor and you're out to it, that's fine. You can stay there. Love on somebody. Give somebody a big hug. If you're not into hugs, that's okay. Give somebody a hug anyway. Jesus. <laughs> wow. How many of you are, are here to Outbreak for the first time? Is that the first time? Was that kind of half first time? <laughs> Your first time? Anybody else? First time? So good to have you. At, wow, there's a whole bunch. Let's give our first timers a big hand. I don't know if some of you guys are thinking, what the heck did I walk into? <laughs> but you know, on the day of Pentecost, it says in Acts chapter 2, that there was a sound of a, a mighty rushing wind, and there was fire that actually descended on people's heads. And they began to speak in, in new tongues. And this prayer meeting actually spilled out on the streets and people from all around the area came because they heard something. They heard a loud sound. And there was a mixed responses. There were people that were giving glory to God because, of, uh, because they were hearing their, their native tongue uh, spoken in, in Israel. Uh, and, but then there was others that mocked and they said that these, are, these men are, are drunk. They've been drunk all through the night. And... Uh, when Peter gets up, his first, he preaches the most epic sermon. So a little, little tip in if you're going to preach a sermon that's going to get 3,000 saved, you start with this opening line. We're not drunk as you perceive. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so obviously he had to clarify something because there was some behavior that made the crowd think that there was, people were drunk with wine. Now here we're, we're not about some actually going after manifestations. What is important is Jesus. Amen. Anybody with me on that? <laughs> we're not just about a manifestation club, but we're about Jesus. But I would like to propose that it's possible on the day of Pentecost if people tried to say, well, we only want a certain manifestation of the Spirit without the perceived drunkenness that there wouldn't have been 3,000 that were saved that day. It is possible to both grieve and quench the Holy Spirit. And we're not going to, we're not going to grieve the Holy Spirit, nor are we going to quench Him. So why don't you just reach out your hands to Him. And whatever God is doing to you, it doesn't have to be a specific manifestation, but if it's tears, if it's laughter, if it's joy, if it's just, if it's, if it's silence, if you, if you feel like you've got to get up and dance, just begin to lean into what God is doing right now. 
Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on. Come on, just string deeply. There's a presence. I, I just actually feel over in this section right here that there's an increase of glory like there's a well. There's kind of a pull of Bethesda thing right now, that's happening right now in Jesus' name. Whoa. Just on the left side in the middle or right, your right side over right now. Just lift your hands up right now. Thank you, Father, right now that there's a release in Jesus' name. <laughs> In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I just see that uh, there's like scales that are falling off of people's eyes right now. He's giving you eyes to see into the spiritual realm. You know, I believe that heavenly visitations are going to become commonplace. Heavenly visitations are going to begin to become commonplace. How many re uh, receive that? Like literally on a daily basis. That there's going to be heavenly encounters, there's going to be throne room encounters. Well, how can that possibly be true? 2 Corinthians 3.18 talks about the, Moses, that the glory that was on Moses' life. Here's a man that actually encountered God face to face. He spoke to him, God face to face as a man speaks to a friend. And he says, i got to have more of your presence. Show me your glory. He goes up to the top of Mount Sinai and encounters God, hides him in the cleft of the rock, and he passes by. And when he comes back down on the mountain, his very face shone with the glory of God so much that physically the children of Israel could not look into his face. They said, you got to cover it. Moses, your face is way too bright. Cover it with a veil. But in 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says that the glory that Moses had experienced was a fading glory, but the glory that we are experiencing is an ever-increasing glory. It says that the, Moses, that the glory that Moses experienced was actually no glory at all compared to the glory that is being released. And so in 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says, We all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of God, we are being transformed into that same image from glory to glory. As we behold Him, as we begin to encounter Him, you see transformation does not occur outside of encounter. Discipline is important, but you can never discipline yourself into an encounter. You can never discipline yourself simply into transformation without encounter. It actually goes hand in hand. As we behold him, we become like him, and then we, we are transformed by the renewing of our mind that in the place of discipline that we actually steward the encounter. Come on, once you just be go behold him right now. Thank you, Father. <laughs> It doesn't matter what ha what's happening with people around you. <laughs> Just lean in. You know, for probably about eight years of my life, I, my prayer, was, pr prayer life had to do with pressing in. Pressing in. I'm running after you, God. I'm pursuing you, God. But probably the biggest revelation that I've had in my world walk is actually not so much pressing in, but there are times for that, but is actually yielding. It's like when you're, if you're trying to run after a person and try to grab them to give them a big hug, and the other one is just like somebody standing behind and you just lean back and you just yield. You give over control. You surrender. Come on, how many of you want to just surrender right now? Take the wheel, take control, take over right now. Why don't, you, why don't you just pray this with me? Father, we just give up control so that you can take control. Not your will be done. Sorry, not my will be done. But your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Come and take over. Take control. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> Fill me to overflowing. <laughs> one more time. I tell you what, did you know that you were a gate of heaven? John chapter 1, Jesus says that 
to uh, Nathaniel. He says that uh, you're going to see greater things than this. You're going to see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man who is the gate of heaven. It says that in 1 John, it says, as he is in this world, so are you. So therefore, in the same way that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was a gate of heaven, that there was actually a, a, angels that were ascending and ascending upon the Son of Man, that as he is in this world, so are we, that we actually walk and we breathe and we are as he is, so therefore you are a gate of heaven. So kingdom is exploding through you right now. Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's not a matter that you're trying to do something in your own strength, but you're just trying to let him do what he does. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in him. Let his desires begin to become. His heart is beginning to meld with your heart. Your heart is beginning to beat with the rhythm of his heart, and his rhythm is going to begin to beat. Stretch your hand out to the person next to you. Come on, kingdom is beginning to explode through you right now. Even at, I tell you what, there's a level up in anointing right now you're going to begin to experience in your own hands right now. Come on, right now. If I could use my own terms, the voltage of heaven is beginning to increase right now. Every person in this place, I thank you, Father, that there's an increase of your anointing in this place. In Jesus' name. Oh! <laughs> all right, all right, I want you to like reach out to the person behind you or in front of you or whatever. Like you've been kind of going side to side, now go front and back. This time it's going to begin to increase. Come on. Thank you, Father, that there's an increase of your glory and your presence in the name of Jesus. More, Lord, more, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Wow. That, whoa. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the voltage is being turned up. <laughs> it's, it's getting, it's increasing. <laughs> You know, if you're wondering what the heck these wild and wackies are doing, it says in Psalm, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's no good watching somebody eating a cheeseburger. <laughs> Just because some people are messy eaters doesn't mean it's really good. Come on, it's, <laughs> come on, it's in this moment that we're changed. As we behold him, as we encounter him, we become like him. And we begin to shine because we are the light. he is the light of the world and so are we. We're his hands and we're his feet. In Ephesians 4, it says, as the body begins to grow up to the head, that there's a maturity of this beginning to happen because the bride of Christ, as the body begins to become in proportion to her head, you are his hands and his feet. As he is in this world, so are we. <laughs> Why do I say whoa? I have no idea. <laughs> it's the only word. <laughs> oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why don't you just say his name, Jesus? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Some people think that heaven is going to be really passive. <laughs> it's 
going to be like a funeral or something. <laughs> yeah, Jesus died, but he was raised again. Come on. According to Revelation, there's only an hour of silence in heaven. The, re the rest of it's loud noise. There's celebration. <laughs> Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Do you know we had um, we had a guy from uh, the UK uh, named Dan King, and uh, he came to our school of supernatural transformation, and he's like, "What the heck is happening here?" <laughs> he goes, "This can't be from God." <laughs> And we talked about manifestations for probably about an hour and a half. And, and the next day, he was just, he was lying on the floor and he wasn't encountering anything. He's like, I don't feel anything. I think these people are faking it. And yeah, I don't see this in the Bible. Anyway, we, we, we laid hands on him and he like, he screamed for like an hour and a half. And uh, God was delivering him of like, pain that was there since he was seven and uh, he, he told he told me that um, he hadn't experienced love since his parents divorced and that was the first time in his life since he was seven that he actually felt love for the first time <laughs> God just delivered him in that moment and I tell you what I know he's, he's going back to the UK and he's like he goes every church every person needs to encounter this I'm like dude you're not the same person I was talking to before <laughs> Because this is real. This is legit. This isn't fake. <laughs> Just lift your hands. <laughs> Come on. His fa the father just wants to be with his kids. I don't know what kind of home you grew up in. But in my home, we used to laugh a whole lot. <laughs> but I tell you what, I, bl I believe that Dad, Abba Father, likes to have fun with his kids. He likes to have fun with his kids. God is in a good mood. <laughs> God is better than you think. <laughs> You know, some of you actually have the perspective that if God is holding his arms out, that he's, he's holding his arms out to smack me. You see, the prodigal son was coming off at a distance, but the father was running with his arms wide open. And if you've had whatever upbringing, then you may think that, that God the Father is ready with his arms outstretched to give you a smack, but he's, with his, he's there with his arms outstretched to embrace you, to hold you, to restore you. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> Taste and see. I don't know if you're all having fun, but I am. <laughs> oh. Do you guys want to hear an awesome, amazing story? <laughs> uh, over the past three months, we've been ministering to a guy. Um, his name's Barakat, and uh, he's from Iraq. And he has a, a little girl named uh, Fa Fatima, and she's beautiful. She's four years old, and she had uh, spina bifida. Um, and uh, they operated her uh, on her in um, Iraq. And they, they botched it up real bad. She's got all kinds of stuff going on in the back, bottom of her back. And, her, and she's, um, she's paralyzed from the waist down. And so they escaped from Iran, <coughs> sorry, Iraq. And uh, they, they went to Indone Indonesia and they, they risked the boats. And they came over in a boat, basically risking their lives. And uh, he has a, you know, a back background with, um, within Islam. And... Uh, 
anyway, since, since we started meeting him, uh, I think the first night, uh, first day that we were out with him, he started to get oil just come, dripping off of his fingers. They prayed for him and just supernaturally, he's, he's freaking out as this oil is actually dripping off his hands. He's like, what the heck is going on here? <coughs> Do you want to finish the story, Nathaniel? I'm just trying to remember all the details of Tom. I can't remember the first time, but, but Jesus, I, I tell you what, Jesus is meeting Muslims all over the world. Um, we have uh, another lady. Yeah, you, I, I can't remember. When was the first time that, um, that, that uh, he met Jesus in his dreams? Yep. Yep. So we've been praying for him. So his wife's actually in quite, in quite severe danger um, in uh, Iraq. Um, because something went down with uh, his business and, and the politics and everything like that. And so she's under house arrest. And so we've been praying for, for a situation because it's very, very dangerous with her and, and trying to get her out of Iraq into Turkey, which is apparently a little bit um, safer. And Jesus appeared to him in his dreams. And he says, I want you to call this guy uh, named Ali. Now, Ali apparently was a homeless guy. He says, no, I'm not going to call Ali. Ali's homeless. He can't help my wife out. And, and Jesus appears to him, I think, like six times. Correct me if I'm wrong here, guys. Um, six times. And he said, no, no, I'm not going to call Ali. I mean, who argues with Jesus in their dreams? By the sixth time, Jesus becomes really firm with him. He says, no, I need you to call Ali. And he says he was quite shaken. And so he gives, he gives Ali a call. And, and Ali says, yes, I've actually cleaned my life up, and I've got a car now and everything like that, and I think I can actually help your wife out. And so there's a, there's a, a, a succession of all these dreams. I don't think I can remember everything about it. 